Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 11 in our incredible tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Xavier NX. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. I'm also going to need you to get out your most excellent Jetson Xavier gear, and I'm going to need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. So what we are going to do today is we're going to look at the homework assignment from lesson number 10, and the homework assignment from lesson number 10 was to independently track two different objects of interest. One camera will track the blue pen, the other camera will track the pink pen. And so that is what your assignment is for today. So what I will need you to do is I will need to get out of your way and then what we need to do is go ahead and fire up Visual Studio Code and we've got that nice there. Got some hate on the last uh, video about the gray background but I don't know, it just seems higher contrast to me. I can go white background with dark letters, or I can go dark background with white letters, but just as I'm looking at this, I get a little more contrast, and it's a little easier for me to see. So if you guys really overwhelmingly like it one way or the other, I'll do what you want. But until there's a consensus, I am probably going to be doing the dark background. Okay, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and start with, well, first of all, how many of you guys were able to, uh, how many of you guys were able to get this lesson done? Were you guys able to make it work? Did you stumble? What problems did you have? Let me know in the comments down below whether you were successful in making this work. And then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and start where we left off in lesson number 10 and you can do that by going to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and search on Jetson Xavier NX lesson number 10. You can do that with this happy little search icon up here and then you can come down and you can get the code that we left off with in last week's episode right mouse click copy. I hope you guys are actually saving your own code. I mean, I hope you have your own folders and organization that you save your own programs. But I guess if somebody was just coming in in the middle of this lesson, they could, or in the middle of this series of lessons, you, they could come over here and uh, start where we're starting. So we're going to get the file explorer going here. We are working in the OpenCV folder. Okay, we are working in the OpenCV folder. I will create a new program, and it looks like we're at OpenCV7. And then I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to call this dual pin because we're going to be doing two different pins and dot pi. The dot pi is kind of important. All right, we will get that Explorer view out of the way. We will enjoy a little hot coffee along with our iced coffee. And let's see, we got that program already, right? We got this program. So we will come over here and we will paste it. And then you know what I always like to do? I always like to run it just to make sure the universe is in proper order. So let's make sure. I think this would be both cameras tracking one color of pen, if I remember correctly. And let's see, that servo library takes a few seconds to load, and so that's why it appears to be a little slow. Okay, let's see here. I've got, I've got the camera on my left. I've got the left camera tracking. It looks like the right camera hasn't found it. Now the right camera kicks in. A boom. Kaboom! Look at that. It's working like it was before, so that's good. But if we put the pink pin up here, Nothing happens because it hasn't been trained to work on the pink pen. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's quit out of this. And let's think about what we need to do. If we come up to, and I'm going to pull this down. If we come up to the top of the program, you can see that the first thing that we did, I'm going to put a little 
white space there, or a little gray space, I guess I should call it. The first thing that we did was to create a track bar, and then we read, it looks like, six different numbers from the track bar. So we want to create a range of acceptable colors of kind of like a low hue value, a high hue value. We want the ones in between a low saturation, high saturation, and then a low value, high value. And we want to set those with slider bars so that we can tune in right on our object of interest. Well, if we are going to be tracking two different objects of interest, we have to have two sets of star, uh, track bars. We could go in and write all this code again, or we could come in and borrow Borrows a lot like stealing, isn't it? But since I wrote this, this would be borrowing from myself. And then paste. And so now this will be two track bars, but I got to go in and I got to name it differently. So instead of track bar, I'll call it track bar two. And then we're going to move which window, track bar two. And then similarly, there's going to be one set of hue saturation and values that we are going to use for the blue pin and we need a separate set for the pink pin so we need to make all new variables here on these uh, we got to make all new variables here uh, on these hue saturation and value parameters so I'm just going to kind of come straight down make this a two to. And you guys be careful because if you get in a hurry and you don't change one of these, you're going to have a problem and it's going to be very hard to debug. Okay, and then which track bar? I'm going to be looking at track bars 2 this time. Okay, and on these second ones, I'm going to try to dial it in a little bit closer to pink. I want it to be a little bit closer to pink because this is kind of dialed in a little bit for blue. And I think for pink, the big deal is the hue value. And I think that if I went like, let's say, uh, 150 to about... 170 and let me make sure I did these on the right one the low should be 150 and the high should be 170 yeah so between 150 and 170 that should be kind of roughly pink at least close enough that we can dial it in from that point all right so we should have a new set of track bars they don't do anything but they should look pretty so let's go ahead and run this just to make sure and also i don't want the track bars on top of the track bar so instead of 1320 this second window i'm going to put at let's say 1100 so the track bars are not on top of each other i hope that makes sense and so this should do exactly the same thing as before but now i should see two track bars pop up Are you guys having as much fun with this as I am? I am having a blast with this. All right, so I've got two track bars there, and you are not able to see it because of the camera view. Maybe I'll go to the smaller camera view for right now just so you can see it. Okay, you see we got two sets of track bars. There's one, there's the other one. Uh, this this one is active. This one, it's getting values, but we haven't done anything with those values yet. But the program didn't crash, and that is a good thing. Okay, let's see. So we've got our track bars done, and then we come down here. This will be the same. We'll still be controlling to uh, pan tilt servo, so a total of four servos on two different brackets. Okay, and then we launch our cameras. This all looks good. Now here we uh, are converting the frame from one camera to HSV, and here we're converting the frame from the other camera to HSV. So far, so good. But now these are uh, all of this data, all of this code here. It's uh, reading the ranges from the track bar. Well, now I have two track bars, so I need to read those ranges from the other track bar. Okay, and then this creates the, the kind of array box of sort of like putting all the information into an array that gives the kind of like extent, uh, the parameter extent of the uh, color space that we're looking at. So all of this from here to here, we want to duplicate, okay? And let's see, we're going to get all of this, control C, and then go down, down, and then paste. Okay, and I didn't 
wide. I got an indentation wrong there. All right, so now this is not going to be hue saturate. Did I copy? I think I copied one too many things. Yeah, because this conversion's already done. I did not mean to copy those two things, right? Because we only need to convert. We only need to convert our images one time to the HSV space. We don't need to do that again. All right. So now I need to come back. And now our hue low value for that second track bar, this should become hue low 2. And similarly, hue up 2. And then where are we going to get it from hue upper or hue lower to hue upper to? Okay, because we renamed all those things above, right? And then this is going to be from track bars to track bars to. And so then we will come back over here. And I'm going to go all the way down. Just this is going to be lower saturation to upper saturation to lower value to upper value to and then we're going to have this sat low to sat high to val low to val high to and guys if you miss one of these your life is going to be miserable trying to debug these things okay you see we're just making all new variables for the second track bar and the second color parameter that we're looking for all right now what we do is this is creating those arrays where we'll put the limits for hue saturation and value the low high low high and low high for those six parameters but now this uh, is going to be the lower bound two and this is going to be the upper bound two and the lower bound two are based on the two parameters which is going to be hue low at, at two lower saturation to, lower value to, and then hue up to, upper saturation to, and upper value to. Now this should give me a new set. This should give me a completely new set of uh, color space parameters that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be trying to uh, track on. Let's just run. It's still not gonna work. I mean it should run, but I just want to make sure I didn't put any errors in there. Make sure the program runs, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. And uh, like I say, this track bar is not going to do anything. It will be changing the values as I do it, but it's not going to be actually tracking on anything. Well, it's kind of interesting. It looks like... Uh, it looks like that camera... Oh, that camera was always looking at blue. Okay. And this one is still looking at blue because even though, okay, what's happened is even though I put the track bar in, even though I'm reading those new colors, that new color box in, I haven't actually started tracking on that. But I think we are where we need to be. So I'm going to cue out of this. That looks good. Now, since I'm going to have to dial in both pins, I'm going to have to dial in the blue pin and dial in the pink pin. I think I need to actually show both uh, mask and so here I create the first mask which is CV2 dot in range and then I go from that lower bound to the upper bound and then I create the second mask which is the mask for the second camera but I use those same values and this was kind of the blue value right so this was that blue value that I was tracking on well now I want to track on those other values that we just brought in and so that would be the lower bound two and the upper bound two that we defined here so this should be a whole new set that I am going to track on and otherwise though this is still the foreground mask for the image from camera two. Okay, so that stays the same. It's just for that mask, I'm going to be looking at the second group of parameters. Now here you can see earlier on, since I really was doing the masking on the same color in both uh, in both frames, I only showed one mask. Well, now I'm going to need to t dial in the blue and dial in the pink. So I really want to show both of them. And so I'm going to copy this, and then I am going to paste this. <clears throat> and what I'll do here is I will show 
foreground mask two, foreground mask two, and instead of putting it at zero, zero, let's put it at, let's just kind of move it over, let's say like 350. So it'll move it over in 350. I should be able to see both masks. I might have to tweak it a little bit to get that to work right. Okay, so I think the big deal is, I think the big deal here is now this FG Mask 2 is using that second set of colors to track on. And so now, since I've fixed FG Mask 2, I think the contours down here, which look at FG Mask 2, I think the contours that look at FG Mask 2, I think that those should work. I really think that those should work. So it might be we're getting close to getting this thing to run. Let's see what happens. You can see I have a little bit of a Windows management issue with both now showing both uh, foreground mask. Uh, okay, we got something kind of come to life here. All right, so this original one, this original one is tracking on blue. And so I picked up the pink pen, as I said, blue. The original one is tracking on blue. And so actually that's kind of dialed in pretty good. I'm going to tweak. I'll move these where you can see them. Okay. I'm going to tweak the track bar one. Okay, and do you see how I'm looking at that mask one to tweak it and just make it a little easier to grab onto? Okay, camera number one is tracking the blue pin. Now, if I show camera number two the blue pin, he's not interested in the blue pin. Camera number two is not interested in the blue pin. Now, the real question is going to be if I come over here and let me put this on top. Let's see if we can get it to recognize the pink pen with these other track bars here. Okay. And it doesn't seem to be picking that up. It doesn't seem to be picking that up in the second camera. So what did I forget to do? And you see it's really, it's not even looking at it at all. So it's just not looking at it at all. So in there, I have an error somewhere. And so let's go back and let's look at the second values. Okay, so uh, FG mask one is working. FG mask two is gonna be based on the image HSV2, okay, and it's going to go from lower bound 2 to upper bound 2, and then lower bound 2 is hue low 2 LS2 LV2, and upper bound 2 is hue up to US2 and UV2. That looks good, and so somewhere I wonder if I did not make these two. So I've got 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. That looks good. And then I've got hue lower to, hue upper to, sat low to, sat high to, val low to, val high to. And then I've got track bars, track bars to, track bars to, track bars to. Okay, let's make sure that we are actually using. So this should be a good FG mask too. Okay, we are actually showing FG Mask 2. Oh, are we not showing FG Mask 2, FG Mask 2? I didn't move FG Mask 2. Okay. So I create FG Mask 1, I create FG Mask 2, and then uh, I go CV2.move window, Mask 2, Mask 2. And let's make sure up here where we're reading that we didn't miss anything, where we're reading those track bars. So uh, here we create the first track bar, okay? And then here we create the second track bar, track bar two. And I've got two, two, two. Ah, I missed one there on sat high. And then track bars two, track bars two, two, two. So that tiny error 
hopefully was what we were dealing with. Did you guys see me do that when that happened? Okay, let's see. Calling it back up. Takes a second to run. Okay, we've locked on to the blue one as we would like to. Okay, and let me see. Yeah, you see this is that foreground mask one. Okay, so I'll move that over there and it is tracking. Now we need to see if we can get this thing to see this one. And uh, he is not seeing it. Let's see if I can get anything to get him to come to life. It is like we are not looking at that one at all. Okay, so the FG Mass 2 is just not seeing anything at all. So somehow I'm either not reading the track bars. So it comes in there, it comes in there. So this is creating them. It looks like I've got twos everywhere. Now let's look when we read them. Make sure that we are reading everything the way we not we want to. So this is the first set for hue uh, levels. That looks good. Okay, upper bound, lower bound are those. That looks good. And now we are going to go H low to hue up to. Those look good. And then let's make sure that we got twos everywhere here. I missed one here. Okay. So you see I was reading I was reading upper value from track bar 1 and that could cause a problem. All right, let's try it again. You guys when you copy and paste, I got in a little bit of a hurry. You've got to really you've got to take your time on that. Do you guys have it working? Well, let's see. We're hoping that that second track bar actually comes to life. I do believe, look at that. I believe that it is trying to find. Boom. All right. Do you see that? We had a couple of errors. Now, the, the left camera is tracking the blue pin. That's good. The right camera is ignoring the blue pin. And so now what I need to do is I need to look at this. Uh, I need to look at this second FG mask. I've got to look at this second FG mask and do you see how I'm barely getting that thing registering? I need to use the second track bar and I need to try to dial in something that would allow me to see that better. Okay, that really looks pretty good, right? I am getting a nice solid find on that. And this other guy, he has decided he likes the other servo because she's blue. Okay, so we get that taken care of. Now I'm going to call this window to the front. And then I think our track bars are good because do you see the two colors? I've got the pin caps on both of them. And so I'm going to give you a bigger view here. That's too big. Let's say I give you that view. All right, so now watch the pink pin. Boom! We are tracking. Okay, do you see that? Let me get my hand out of your way. Okay. Now watch. Do you see how this thing is tracking? And you can see that it is tracking both by looking at the image of the pin, the pink pin cap. It's keeping it in the center of the field of view as I move it around. Right? So you can see that's working. And also if you just look at if you just look at the camera itself, you can see that it is tracking. Okay, let's give it something to look at there that is just really neat so I'll leave that down there and then similarly this one is tracking okay this one is tracking very nicely and so if we put them down like that then you can see that they're both tracking at the same time boom okay that is pretty cool so we are independently tracking two different objects with two different cameras at the same time. And you can imagine a lot of different things that you could do. What if this was coming over? I'm tracking the pink pin. And let's just say that 
I don't have a blue pin and I'm tracking the pink pin and I leave the field of view, you could imagine passing off looking for that pin to the other camera. So like if it's a person walking down the hall, you're tracking him with one camera and then when you lose him, you could begin tracking that same person with the other camera. So you can imagine there's a lot of different things that you could do with this that could be pretty uh, pretty interesting and pretty exciting. But I think what I, I think what I'm going to give you for a homework for the next uh, a homework for the next week is let's focus on the camera that is tracking blue. okay let's focus on the camera that is tracking blue here. And what I want you to see is what if I go over here, okay? Now do you see, uh, well, if, let me get it like this, and then I'm going to move it quickly, and now what happened? It should be able to see this, but it moved out of its field of view so quickly that it wasn't able to track it, and now it just sits there and gives up, like, uh, I don't see a blue thing, so since I don't see a blue thing, I will just sit here. So what your guys' homework assignment is for next week is that if you don't have your object of interest in the frame to track on, what I want you to do is go search it out. Okay, so as long as it's in the field of view, as long as it's in the field of view, you're fine. Just track it. But as soon as you lose it, then start scanning the range that you can scan looking for it. And then if you find it, then jump in and start tracking. So you're either going to be tracking, like I show here, you're either going to be tracking or you're going to be trying to find the object that you're tracking. Does that make sense? I think that would be pretty interesting because if you're really interested in blue pins and there's not one there, you got to think, well, what if it's in the room but just not in the field of view? You could go and you could see if you could find it. Now we're doing blue pins. Why am I doing blue pins and pink pins? Just because it's easy to do the demonstration. And what I can do is I can show you the two cameras with the servos. I can show you the two pins. I can show you what they're doing in the camera view. And then also in these uh, two windows over here, you can see how it's tracking. So sitting here, you can sort of see the same thing. But you can see that this, this mindset, this way of thinking would be the same if you had cameras and you were tracking people walking around, you could find the person of interest based on face recognition and you could track them, okay? But it's hard for me to choreograph that. Now, you know if we can do it for this, you could do it for people's faces or chickens or whatever you're interested in, but it's just for the sake of showing you how to do it, it's easier doing it with this little setup. Okay, guys, I am having so much fun. Are you guys having as much fun with this as I'm having? Let's see where we're going to be going. Where we're going to be going is we are going to... Uh, we are going to be uh, doing the homework assignment, showing the homework assignment in next week's lesson. And then what I think we'll do is we'll probably go in and start tracking things more interesting than just on color. What we'll probably do then is we will begin to um, look at like facial recognition where we can train it to learn people's faces and then we can recognize faces and then you could imagine the cameras could track on a specific person's face okay I think that would be pretty interesting and then after doing facial recognition then I think we're gonna go in and do the some of the uh, NVIDIA uh, Jetson inference libraries where we're gonna start using their frameworks and we will be doing image detection and we will be doing uh, image we, we will be doing image recognition and then we will be doing object detection and then what I'll do is I will show you how to train a deep neural network so that uh, you know if we use those uh, standard libraries it will find things that it has been trained on but if you're interested in a particular item it won't find that unless it's been trained on it so what we need is we need an ability to train the deep neural network on the objects that we're interested in not the ones that it was pre-trained for so we'll do that and then I think at that point I am really 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 seriously considering just teaching you guys PyTorch because right now we've been using OpenCV and then we've been using other people's deep neural networks and so forth, like if you looked at the Jetson Nano series. But I think the time has come for us to really learn PyTorch because PyTorch is the software that allows you to build your own deep neural network kind of from scratch or 
retrain, retrain a good deep neural network that's already out there. And so I think with this series of lessons, we've gone pretty quickly, right? We'll be at lesson 12, and we've kind of gotten through the basics in lesson 12, and there'll probably be another four or five lessons to kind of do the face recognition and the object detection and the uh, uh, image recognition, and then we will probably be moving on into some of the more advanced stuff. Okay, guys, I really have fun with this. Really, it's a huge encouragement for you guys. It's a huge encouragement for me to have you guys come in and tune in every week, and so really appreciate it. If you like this video, think about giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the button down below to subscribe, and then ring the bell so that you'll get notifications for my things that are upcoming. Okay, guys, Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk with you guys later.